Hello, my name is Frank Ramirez and I am covering the Autonomous Technology Stack. This is part of the Stanford Graduate School of Business Open Road class where we focus on innovation in cars, driving, and mobility. Currently, almost every auto manufacturer, as well as many technology companies, are racing to build autonomous driving technology. As seen in the photos, each manufacturer's approach looks drastically different. In this video, we will explore how some of these players are implementing their respective vehicles. Over the course of this presentation, we will answer a few key questions. What is the autonomous vehicle technical stack? Why is the technical stack significant? And what can we learn from the technical stack in autonomous vehicles today? As a case study, we will look at Tesla versus Ford and look at their sensor suites and compute hardware, and then draw conclusions as to what we've learned. So what is the Autonomous Vehicle Technology Stack? The automated driving stack shown here is really a mental model for layering together different pieces of technology required to accomplish a given goal, so automated driving. The driver assistance software at the top is software that does all the decision making, routing, basically dictating how a car can drive and will drive. The sensor fusion is software that supports the driving assistance software um, and really takes all of the different signals from the sensors and processes them in order to make sense of what they're telling the system. The compute sits underneath every, everything in the software stack um, and is either a central processing unit or graphical processing unit shown here a CPU or GPU and does all the number crunching. And finally, the sensors radar, camera, LiDAR, sonar, which are common sensors in automotive applications, uh, provide a perception of the real world around the vehicle. An example of a technical stack in practice can be seen here in the form of the set of partners helping to build Delphi's autonomous vehicle platform. The driving software is provided by a startup that was acquired by Delphi in 2015 called Automatica. Mobilized software is used to perform sensor fusion from cameras, radars, and lidars. Mapping is provided by a partnership between Mobileye and Here Maps. Intel is providing a powerful po processor that enables the underlying computation, and the sensor suite is developed by a combination of Quantergy, Delphi, and Mobileye. For the purposes of the presentation, we will focus on the hardware elements of this tech stack, namely the compute and the sensors. So why is the technology stack so significant? Why are we spending so much time on it? If you take a look at the following photo, you can see that this is what we um, now know is the second version of Ford's autonomous vehicle platform. Try and see if you can pause the video and see if you can locate all the sensors. Here, all the sensors are shown and highlighted for you. You can see there's actually quite a few but for the most part, they're rather well integrated into the design of the vehicle. Now we see a version of the same Ford Fusion that was used in the Ford Autonomous Vehicle platform, but now being used in Uber's platform, or version one of their Ford Fusion platform. Notice that it's the effectively identical base vehicle, but the sensors now are much more prominent. Here they are circled just in case you couldn't find them. By studying the technical stacks of autonomous vehicles on the road today, we can get an insight into the fragile balance that every auto manufacturer is dealing with. Namely, how many sensors do we put on a vehicle to be able to safely drive? More sensors means you have more information about your environment, as well as increased redundancy in the case a given sensor fails. So for example, if LiDAR fails, you can use camera. Less sensors means that you can produce autonomous vehicles much more cheaply, and less hardware generally correlates to less electrical requirements, which then would mean increased driving range of the vehicle. For the purpose of the rest of the, the video, we're going to look at a case study between Tesla and Ford. Tesla Autopilot recently released its version 2.0 in October, and per the marketing and Elon Musk, it is supposedly capable of L4 autonomy given its hardware. So effectively only software updates will be needed for it to reach that level of autonomy. 
The Ford Autonomous Vehicle Platform is also on its second hardware revision and was released in December 2016. So first let's take a look at the sensor suites on both of these vehicles. Presented on this slide is a overhead graphical diagram of all of these sensors on the Tesla Model S and all of these sensors on the Ford Fusion platform. Please take a moment to pause the video if you would like to compare these diagrams directly before we dive any further. The Tesla vehicle has an array of eight cameras, one of which is mounted on the front windshield and is actually a component consisting of three individual cameras mounted as one. Uh, there is a rear view camera and the rest of the cameras are side facing. There is no LiDAR installed on the Tesla vehicle and only one radar unit, which is forward facing and has a medium to long range capability. There are 12 sonar units installed around the rim of the front and back bumper and aid in um, detecting vehicles, very vehicles and other objects very close to the Tesla. In contrast, the Ford Fusion has an array of seven cameras. Uh, three are forward facing, two are side facing, and two are rear facing mounted near the trunk. There are two LIDARs, which both have a 360 degree field of view mounted right in front of the side view mirrors. Um, there is an array of two long range radars mounted at the very front of the vehicle and at the very tail of the vehicle. Um, and an array of four short range radars mounted on the corners of the vehicle. Similar to the Tesla, there are 10 sonar sensors mounted at the rims of the hood and the trunk. Based on our observations of the number and types of sensors on each vehicle, we can begin to produce a cost estimate for each sensor suite. Tesla's omission of LiDAR hardware means that the majority of its cost basis is in its camera technology and enables it to provide its suite at half the cost of Ford, a third of the cost of Delphi, or roughly a tenth of the cost of Waymo. Note how the introduction of LiDAR quickly increases each sensor suite's cost basis, and Waymo's extensive reliance on LiDAR is reflected in its overall sensor suite cost. Next, let's focus on the compute element of the driving hardware. Since the Tesla Autopilot hardware has been available since October of last year, there have been many public teardowns uh, in order to determine what exactly is the brains of the vehicle. It turns out that the NVIDIA Drive PX2, picture to the left, is the processor of choice for Tesla. In terms of performance, it has 13 trillion operations per second and draws a power of 250 watts. Since those numbers in absolute don't mean very much, the performance is equivalent to approximately 15 brand new MacBook Pros from this year and the power draw is equivalent to the average energy efficient refrigerator. Since Ford's vehicle is not publicly released, we do not have any information to the exact specifications of the compute. However, what we can find are photos and from what we've seen um, of the Ford test vehicles, they are jam packed with compute power so much so that the uh, Ford has actually acknowledged having to put in a separate power system in order to um, enable all of it beyond what the car is normally capable of powering. Side by side, it's clear that the Tesla hardware is much smaller um, by, order of magnitude, by an order of magnitude. Um, and we can infer that the power draw is also smaller by an order of magnitude, if not orders of magnitude, which would imply that Ford is perhaps not as refined yet in their algorithm design as Tesla is. In conclusion, we found that the Tesla hardware suite does not make a bet on LiDAR. Instead, it relies much more on cameras and radar to do its sensing. As a result, it has a cheaper sensor suite in terms of build of materials, um, and in terms of its compute, it uses a much smaller embedded processor from NVIDIA, which means that, or in, at least implies, that it perhaps has a more refined compute and set of algorithms than Ford. Um, Ford is betting on LiDAR as a necessity, has a more well-rounded sensor approach, 
which then means that its sensor suite is more expensive. In addition, its compute or its vehicle is jam-packed with extensive onboard compute, um, which may imply that they are still aggressively refining their algorithms. Thank you very much for listening. Uh, please refer to the attached memo for more information and comparisons on other major players in the autonomous space.